Hi everyone, bright broad things to you. Um, I know it's been a while since I've done a video, but with my health and everything, haven't been doing that good. But now I'm back and hopefully better than ever. So to start out with for this video, I'm going to start talking about ancestors. Why you work with them, how you work with them, um, everything about them. For me personally, I know a lot of my beliefs and a lot of the ways that I work with my ancestors are going to be different from how other people work with theirs. So to start out with, I have an ancestral altar. that, And with the genealogy that I have found for my family for both sides, um, I have pictures and mementos and actual items that are on my altar. And in doing this, I talk to my ancestors. I ask their advice. I ask them for help. I ask them for guidance for workings. So every time that I do a working, um, if something doesn't seem right or something's off or I need a little extra of a, of a boost, I will talk to them. And in doing this, um, they always ask for something in return. Just like anything else that you work with, whatever you take, you have to give. So with that, I like to give them things such as a lot of my family didn't drink, but some did. So I give them honeyed wines. I give them food. Um, sometimes it depends on who I'm asking for help. If it's one of the people that I was closest to, um, I know that they enjoy certain types of foods more than others, so I'll give them those. Um, there's flowers, coffee, the list goes on and on and on. Um, even some of them preferred special scents, so I'll get perfumes. Like I said, the list goes on. So, in doing that, they help me, I help them. It's a, I'll scratch your back if you scratch mine kind of a thing. So it's very helpful. Now, most people that work with their ancestors have a gigantic altar. Unfortunately, I don't have the room for that. My altar is about the size of a standard sewing machine. If you sew, it's about the size of this. This is how big my altar is. And this includes both sides of my family going back at least eight generations or more, depending on which side it is. So, with the size of the altar, I don't believe that it matters. Some people do, some people don't. But uh, mine has always been small. I'm happy with my small altar. Um, I do have specific places that I can put food and drink in their offerings to them. I do give them candles a lot. Um, I'll pick a candle that either smells really nice <laughs> or one that's just pretty. And after doing this, you know, I'll thank them for their assistance in whatever I was doing. And the funniest thing about all is... If you have familiars, like we do, your familiars will become accustomed to your ancestors being on your altar. And our familiars like to go and kiss the altars and rub up against them. We have cats and dogs. So if you know us well, you know how much our, anim our animal children mean to us. So it's sort of a, a symbiotic relationship with them as well. So, yeah, and <laughs> I don't actually have a lot to say about it, except if you wish to do an ancestral altar, make sure that you've done your genealogy homework. Check both sides of your family. Go as far back as you can. I always recommend Ancestry.com, anything like that to facilitate you moving forward. And, of course, if you have any questions or any kind of thing you need help with. Charles and I are always here to help you and so is the Rose Quartz Labyrinth and I'm sure Jared at Papa Hood Sorcery would be more than happy to help as well. So thank you guys for tuning in and I hope you have a bright wonderful rest of your days. Bright blessings.